Now Kroger, 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 Kroger got the right hand free. He's loose with the right hand, and he starts to retaliate, and down goes Nyland, and the two of them are hammering each other. Knights of Columbus, that hurt. It's old time, my game. Enforcer of all hockey podcasts. It's the biscuit. It's the biscuit. The enforcer of all hockey podcasts. God help the fucking day if fighting's ever been. There's a country will stop working on the bat and fucking candle. Hi everybody. It's the biscuit podcast. Hey, you wanna go? Yeah, okay. Good luck, dude. All right, Biscuit Babies, I'm uh, with uh, Dr. Silverwood, Ph.D., criminologist, researcher, and writer, and star of Ice Guardians, and uh, coming back on the Biscuit, Uh, so it must not have scared you off last time. (laughs) Always great to chat. (laughs) How have you been? I've been good. Yeah, busy. Busy, Busy, right? That's always a good thing, better than, uh, you know, not doing anything. Absolutely. How are your devils doing this season? A bit hit and miss. Yeah, you know. <laughs> not quite sure. They can be amazing or they can be pretty appalling. <laughs> um, well, we're here to discuss because there's been a lot of chatter, um, more so than usual, of the uh, Elite Ice Hockey League and their Department of Safety. Um, it's, it's a league I've really started to follow more uh, as of last season and, you know, continuing on to this season. But there seems to be um, some issues going on with the Department of Safety over there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be honest, it's been a recurring issue for the last few years. Okay. Um, there's certainly been calls for change for a long time. Um, but this year, um, kind of took the biscuit <laughs> um, without being to insult you. <laughs> yeah. Now, the league is fairly young, um, being formed in 2003. So, you know, there is going to be a little bit of a learning process. But you would think, you know, 14 years later that they start to get a handle on it. And the uh, what's the uh, the the situation or the the play that had brought you know the, brought it to light on Twitter and, and to my attention is the uh, the Spiro uh, Gallicus and uh, the Colton Fredder incident um, from what was it a, about a week ago? Yes, game on October twenty second, um, Sheffield Steelers versus Belfast Giants, um, a regular league game. Um, it was a game that was sort of quite um, tension was quite high. Um, one of our um, longest serving referees was involved um, in the game uh, and there was an altercation between Sheffield Steelers Colton Fretta and um, Belfast Giants Spiro Galakos. Now, the play before I had seen where Galakos um, checks from behind on, uh, was it on Fretter? It was, yes. Okay, so he... It was he, on, he, on Fretter, but not really from behind, but that's the... Uh, that was the claim. And uh, no call. Um, I didn't see really any reason f- for it. It wasn't really boarding. It was just a, you know, a nasty hit from behind. Yep. So play continues. And uh, I'm not sure how long after the next altercation was, but it seemed that Spyro had, you know, hit, hit, hit Fredder again and, you know, skates off into middle ice and Fredder comes full blast, two-handed, you know, check into the back of his skull. Yeah, it was kind of like a two-handed Superman um, sucker punch, really. Did, did you right have to the back of the head at the base of the you know top of the top of the neck, the base of the skull at, at full speed? Yeah, pretty much full speed. He sort of intentionally charging towards him. Now, there's a huge difference between these two players if you look at penalties and minutes. Um, Spyro having 105 and 11 games alone this season. And uh, Fredder with, you know, 52 this season and, and through 13 games, but uh, uh, uncharacteristic of him because he's only had a career high in his playing career of 65 thus far, you know, coming into this season. Yeah. Both men are Canadians. Um, is there a history between these two? As far as I'm aware, there isn't. Um Spiro uh, Golakos is uh, newer to the elite league than than Freta, but as far as I'm aware, that the, there's no history between them, and um, this all sort of relates to the play on the day. So 
the Department of Safety dishes out the suspensions, and originally, uh, Fredder gets one game for his, you know, hit from behind, and Spiro gets Spiro gets three games, if, if I'm uh, correct there. Yeah, absolutely. It was a game um, to Fretter um, for charging, um, and it was sorry a match penalty for to Fretter for charging, and a three match um, ban to um, Galakos for a checking from behind and for the kick. Yes, the kick. Uh, I, I I had seen people on Twitter saying it was attempted murder. His kick on yeah. him. <laughs> Um, it's a li- little excessive. I've never heard of anyone being murdered by a you know kick to their equipment before. Yeah, a kick to the shin where you have a shin guard. I mean, yeah, it was probably unnecessary, but the, at that point, tensions were high. Um, attempted murder seems like you, uh, you're trying to get attention on Twitter, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people love that, um, <laughs> love the idea of getting that. It's a very, I mean, one thing about UK hockey, even though it's sort of small comparatively, it's very passionate. The yep. fan base are highly passionate, lots of season ticket holders, um, a lot of people sort of who, you know, very um, into the game and into their team. So there tends to be quite a lot of banter um, and disagreement between between teams Um and a lot of people enjoying social media for, right. for making the most of that. So to call it sort of attempted murder or to call it um, sort of the worst incident completely ignores the, the difference between concussions and other injuries to me. Yeah, you can you can go ahead and pump the brakes on the attempted murder. I mean, yeah, he kicked him in the shin, but as far as the history of hockey and uh, brawls go, you know, very minor shit happened in that incident. And it... Yeah. it Unfortunately, shows a uh, not a not a, that that the fans are more just kind of jumping onto something instead of calming down and you know realizing what happened and realized realizing where this is in the the history of hockey and how it goes and you know instead of I've had this conversation with um, several people here in the states and in Canada that that kind of uh, Homer mentality from uh, football over there kind of bleeds into the hockey a little bit that they're not looking past, you know, the sweater and the logo on there to see like what the situation actually is and just kind of going, Oh fuck the Steelers. Fuck that guy. Kick him out of the league. He's a murderer. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) totally. And I think it's, I have to say it's very different from, from soccer over here from football because, you know, it's not as geographically, Based, um, it's not as class based as as soccer tends to be. Um, certainly, there's a lot less aggression and violence. It's very safe to be a fan and sit anywhere in the arena without, you know, someone might tease you a little bit. But it's all very light hearted. Well, that's good. Um, and, you know, it, that makes it very different to football here. But it still has that. People are very very passionate. They don't really sit on the fence and go to the occasional game. People who who go to games over here tend to go to all games. Now, I've I've also heard that a lot of people on Twitter when they you know, saying um, that the the EIHL fans are uneducated, and I don't think that's true. I mean, with the league being around for years now, I, at least at this point, they're starting to realize, you know, how the game is played and what's going on. And there's a lot of guys in the league playing that, you know, have played uh, NHL minutes or in different leagues. But uh, what do you think that sort of – is it because that there's such a new league, you think that there's a little bad taste for everyone else about it? I think that to me, the biggest difference is the guys that we are having um, over here to play now, we're importing from sort of other countries, other leagues. The standard has increased a lot in the last six to eight years. Um, but what pe- the fans perceive that the standard of officiating hasn't improved. Yeah, I've read that so, too, where there, because there's no junior system over there that, you know, there's not a place for the referees to, you know, build up and get game experience. They're just kind of like, okay, here's. Here's the um, top top uh, top bar league because that's as as high as it goes in the UK, isn't it? Is the elite league? Yeah, the elite league is the top, but there is. I mean, there there are junior teams and there are lower leagues that feed into the elite league. So okay. referees do, you know, they are not wanting to sort of single out referees. Certainly, you know, not in any specific case, but referees do have training. Um, the issue is because referees aren't paid over here. Um, they're well, they're, they're given a very small um, payment for each game, but they're not not enough for it to be their job right. or the most important matter. They might have to spend 
10 hours unpaid in a car every every night just to get to the rink and to get there sort of 75 pounds to be a referee hmm. um so the, it's not as professional as as other leagues they don't receive the same amount of training the training isn't compulsory and you know as we've seen the the system that is a checks and balance for this which is the department of player safety um has been completely ineffective for a very long time and at the end of the day the refs are all they're all human still. I mean, the mistakes are going to be made, but when it gets down to a, a, a committee, a board, of, a board of committee, um, you know, looking at this incident afterwards and still coming up with that suspension, it seems like something is, is amiss in, in that committee and something has to change. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting that you say committee because the Department of Player Safety, um, as I discovered around this time last year, when and there were similar problems, um, and we investigated it, and I offered to help out. The Department of Player Safety was one person who um, is a retired referee um, in the UK who just reviews incidents after the game and reports on them. So it's not a committee. Um, it's not um, clear and transparent who is on it when it is just one person who used to be involved um, in the in the team and in the league. Um, and... It it's, lacks expertise. As, as far as I'm concerned, it should be a committee of, of five people with at least two ex-players and a couple of ex-officials as well as somebody else impartial. So you're telling me that the Department of Safety is one one dude? <laughs> one person taking phone calls in a lay-by from what I gather. Really? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's it's pretty insane. Um, and there's been a call out on social media for a long time. That's um, that's and, shocking to me that it's one guy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they've. I don't know whether you've been following it again more recently because they've now rev- uh, gone to an independent review after the Twitter outcry. Right now, this is from a third party uh, reviewing yeah. it, right? Yeah. So what? I mean, I issued a statement on Twitter um, after they made the announcement, just to say that the you know the single most important matter in the UK is hockey safety. And we have an ineffective Department of Player Safety. Um, we've, we demonstrate it's ineffective, dangerous and contributing towards a culture where players don't feel protected by the officials um, and the Department of Player Safety. And my concern is that um, it will lead to players taking matters into their own hands. And the elite league um, is leaving itself open to litigation, but more importantly, putting players' health at risk. So alongside many ex-players and ex-officials, I've also offered my services voluntarily to the league um, for the Department of Player Safety, um, but have always been told that it's not required and that the Department of Player Safety is fit for purpose. Um, That got quite a bit of attention on on Twitter, um, as did other people, um, including ex-players and current players, um, giving their opinions. And then the Elite League the following day said that they'd made the unprecedented move to review the Department of Player Safety decisions um, and to get somebody else involved. So uh, have you heard from them since you've reached out and offered your services? Or they just kind of said, you know, chill out, doctor. It's all, Everything's okay? Um, very much. Hockey in the UK can be seen very much as an old boys club. Yeah. Um, there, there's a keen for people to be friendly with people, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that or anything ineffective about that. But when people are making claims that – it would be easy to bribe the Department of Player Safety with a cash envelope if your team is rich. And when people are making those claims publicly, it brings the league into disrepute. Um, and it brings, you know, it makes players realise, you know, that they may be concerned about their safety um, in the future. And I think if you have an impartial, larger committee, then you wouldn't have this problem at all. But uh, I've been told very strongly that there's no need for it to change. And that's... Uh, that's uh Highly, uh, um, that people, do, everyone feels the opposite of that. That that there has to be a change. It's to a, almost to a breaking point now, where you're fearing litigation against the league when somebody gets you know severely hurt because of the these actions. Absolutely, um, I mean concussions pretty much at epidemic levels now. You know we're seeing it happen more and more. Obviously, that was dealt with well in Ice Guardians. Um, in the documentary and by many other people who write about it. Um, And I think, you know, there has to be really clear that when you make some kind of player safety announcement, 
um, like this. And there is outcry from every team, including many fans of the team who got off the most lightly, saying that it clearly wasn't fair, even though it benefited their team, then it is time to, to have a look. And to their credit, the Elite League did respond. Um, they asked for um, Lyle Seitz, who's a former NHL linesman, along with members of the Player Safety Committee, to look um, at the incident. And they've now um, issued new um, penalties for that. And they've also um, removed Simon Kirkham, who was the Department of Player Safety, from his post. Now, I had heard um, from my good buddy Darren at the Fourth Line Voice that that gentleman you had just mentioned actually works for the Sheffield Steelers, or did? Is there any truth in that? Um, I don't know exactly where whether he's worked um, for for that group. I know um, ice hockey in the UK is very um, how do I put this? <laughs> Um, ice hockey in the UK um, is very incestuous in the sense that lots of players have played for lots of teams, lots of referees um, have got contacts, friends, family um, in different areas. Okay. Um, and there is always allegations of people being biased, just the same as there would be if we had an independent committee with ex-players on. People would say they're being biased towards the teams they used to play for. Um, or people would say would be biased because of the area of you know the country that you come from, so I wouldn't like to comment explicitly on whether he did paid work for them. But I know you know there's allegations that um, he has connections with two of the big clubs. So this third party that comes in did mm-hmm. was their their review taken into um, consideration when they dished out more games to these gentlemen? Yes, uh, the Elite League took um, on board everything that they suggested. So Colton Fretter, um, who originally had one game, his suspension is now six games. Okay. Um, and Spiro Galakos, who originally had three games, now has two games. So they've reduced his. They've taken off the five-plus game for checking from behind from his record. Um, so he now has a two-game suspension. And Colton Fretter, who was, the, who was um, checking from behind and charging, he now has six games which I think is probably much more accurate of the actual incident. I agree. I agree full heartedly. And I think, and I, I know people hate hearing the, the, the term hockey play, but Spiro's hits, you know, if you want to say they were dirty or nasty or whatever, that's fine. But they resembled more of a hockey game than somebody turning and skating full bore, you know, two handed punching the dude in the back of the head when he's not looking. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there there is a big difference between play when you are on the puck, um, when the game is in progress, and play when either when the whistle has been blown or when neither of you are remotely near the you know the puck. But there's got to be something said too when that guy hits him twice from behind. You know, he's got to kind of realize, oh shit, you know, I've been fucking with this guy all game. I should probably you know know where I don't know what number Fredder is, but say he's thirteen. I should know where thirteen is probably at all times. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, that that's what a lot of people were saying, you know, you, you shouldn't turn your back on it after you've delivered delivered a hit. Um, my my opinion, probably unsurprisingly, for those people who, who kind of know me and know my my uh, involvement in Ice Guardians, is that if we didn't have the instigator rule um, and this had been allowed to be played out before that, then it would, Freta wouldn't have got to the point where he was taking this into his own hands. Exactly. He's one of the most powerful you know, one of the best players in the league, um, and he's now suspended for for six games. I think if he'd had protection on the ice and been able to account for that as part of the game, then it wouldn't have got to the stage it's got now. Well, that was something Darren had brought up as well from uh, Fourth Line that you know when it, the first time your your teammate gets hit from behind, okay. The second time it happens, nobody's stepping up for this man, or you know, so a, a player that's not used to this sort of. Um, I guess violence, for lack of a better term, you know, reacts in a uh, more animalistic way where he hasn't been conditioned to deal with such a thing where he just flips the fuck out and goes charging at him. When it oh, yeah, I mean, it was he, proper red mist. It wasn't an intentional, you know, he he didn't think in advance how he was going to do it. He'd, he'd lost all control by for the sure. when he went skating towards him. Because it was, boom, hit the ice up, skated right at him. I mean, that... It, if you ha- you have children, I have children. You, I've seen them react that way, where it's just like, oh shit, and then afterwards they're kind of, you know, what happened? 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, you... yeah, I mean, and I'd say that about um, Gulakos as well, because if he's lying prone on the ice with a concussion from being charged at from behind and kicks out, it could well be a sort of defensive move, you know, self-preservation. You don't really know what you're doing, but that's the only way you can protect yourself because he was, con- you know, um, Kreta was continuing to go after him when he was lying prone on the ice. Well, for sure. I'm, unfortunately, I've been in some street fights and I've been punched in the back of the head. And when you come to on the ground... You're just swinging. I mean, it's yeah. just uh, a natural. Unless you're you're not swinging, and then you, then you're in some trouble. Um, it's almost <laughs> like a, a a natural human reaction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. If if you're um, in such a sort of recessive sort of position where you're you know lying on the ice, um, you know you you, you couldn't free his hands. His hands wouldn't have been able to reach uh, Fretter at that point. And I think it's just instinctive. Um, I'd be surprised if he intentionally meant to do it. But again, he might have been seeing red mist at that point. But I do think you need to take into account his, his state at the time when he had just been unexpectedly sort of sucker punched, really, to the back of the head um, and now, was lying down on the ice. Has he been tested for concussions after that then, I hope? Um, I, I assume so. I know that uh, the Belfast Giants um, issued a statement to say that he was suffering from symptoms of concussion. So I'm assuming he's had good medical attention from their team doctor and uh, perhaps even the hospital. Now, I, I want to go back to earlier in the episode when you had mentioned, you know, that the players are going to have to start taking matters into their own, own hands. And at, at a certain point, that's almost a good thing until you get something like this. Now, when I say that, I mean... Uh, Spyro checks a guy in the back and a teammate comes over and they drop gloves and they take care of it that way. I would like to see teammates and players be able to take matters in their own hands that way instead of, you know, it happens again and then somebody who's not conditioned or has that mentality to be an enforcer and want to protect his teammates get to this point and then you have something like occurred on, what would you say, it was the 28th? Uh, 22nd. 22nd, I'm sorry. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm very much um, for allowing players to please themselves a bit. I think one of the bigger problems in the UK is the fact that we have a three-man refereeing system. So we have one referee and two linesmen. Um, so a lot of things do tend to get missed by their referee just because they're human um, and they're doing their you know, their job. Um, it's impossible to see everything. I think if we had a four-man system with two referees and two linesmen, it might be mitigated slightly. Um, however, I still think we have the issue with, with not enough qualified um, officials um, and not enough sort of training um, for them and the fact that they're, they're not paid enough for that role. Well, yeah, it's going to be hard to find guys and, and gals to do it if, you know, here's the 25 bucks for the game or, you know, I, d- I don't know the number. But, I mean, like you said, if someone's driving 10 hours to come do it, you're really lucky to have four people out there doing the job. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we have to, if we're investing this much in, in players um, with two teams in the um, CHL this year as well, um, Nottingham Panthers and the Cardiff Devils, with increased sort of international attention as we're sort of getting better and better players, ex-NHL players, um, to not invest in officials in, in their training um, and in giving them a decent payment for what they're doing um, is, is kind of ridic- you know, ridiculous, really. I know there's been a lot of allegations made to, to referees um, by fans, so I'm not, this isn't a scientific um, analysis or anything, but, you know, allegations made that if the player has to um, file a, if they give a match penalty, they have to complete additional paperwork after the game, which they're not paid for. So they intentionally don't call things um, as seriously as they could in order to try and save themselves some paperwork after the game. (laughs) Um, I have no evidence that that's actually true. I know that's the allegation that's been made. Um, But, you know, we need to be more transparent here. We need to have a system in place um, whereby people know that these things will be ruled upon um, I mean, everybody laughed at the, the concept of, of a one-game, one-match penalty. I couldn't believe it. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. And, uh, and I, if, I, if and it was I'm, a one-off, you know, you kind of think, OK, well, you know, Department of Player Safety, you know, needs to learn something from this. But this has been going on for years, and people have been calling for change uh, for years about this. So now, um, I know it's not your, your expertise here, but... Um, how does the league do monetarily? Do they have the um, ability to start paying another ref or 
is this like, you know, they're doing what they can with what they got. And that's about, you know, un- unless they start making more money off of, you know, whether it be marketing or, you know, the unfortunate event like we have here where ticket prices are, you know, super fucky. Um, mm-hmm. is, is there any kind of progression towards, is that even spoke of, you think, in well, the league? It, it is a little bit. Um, the issue we have um, with the league is that it's owned by the owners of the 12 teams that are in it. Um, and the chairperson of the league um, is also one of the owners of one of the teams. Um, where people have begun to get rather conspiracy theorists about this is the fact that the chairperson of the league who is ultimately responsible for employing the Department of Player Safety and a lot of other decisions, is also the owner of Sheffield Steelers. Okay, that's um, what I had heard then. That the, <laughs> That's what I had heard. The, see, now that yeah. seems, uh, you know, d- dipping your pen in company ink there. That, that, that can't be right. That's got to stop. Yeah. I mean, this is what worries me. And, I mean, last year when um, Brian McGrattan came over to the UK um, and I met him before, he came over because I met him at the Ice Guardians premiere and I was kind of saying, you know, my concern is that players who probably need a little bit of extra support, having been high profile players, many of whom have concussions and other um, injuries are coming over to to a um, a league, which despite the fact that um, it's becoming more professional, um, has a lot of problems, you know, not least in, you know, the lack of medical care that, um, some of the um, NHL teams or AHL teams have um, certainly lack of clarity in who manages it and the decision making. I mean, we had a problem last year with, um, and again, it was the Sheffield Steelers again, um, who were making a sort of tactic of running the goalie. Now, five years ago, you wouldn't have get a, been able to get away with running the goalie because you would have been forced to answer yeah. answer to it by the other team. But um, the teams were so concerned about the instigated penalty and, or, you know, being a man down for a moment. So it just became this point that it just repeatedly happened. Um, and the Department of Player Safety did nothing to to deal with it. And actually the officials weren't doing enough to deal with it. So what would you, if say you were appointed to help, you know, give your services to the Department of Player Safety, what do you think you could do to help this situation and move forward in the way that the Elite League needs to move to uh, maintain their status as the Premier League in the United Kingdom? Well, um, I think that I've got a very different skill set to the majority of people involved in hockey, um, given that I've come in from a a sort of research point of view, um, which is, you know, extremely different. I certainly don't have the expertise of somebody who's been an official and I don't have the expertise of somebody who's been a player. But I have spent 10 years researching the league um, and, you know, working alongside the players and understanding players and the officials um, and the system of the league. And I think just that sort of fifth person, perhaps, on the disciplinary committee that could give an insight or, or give a, a vote if the other teams aren't, the other groups aren't coming to um, any decision, it just might be worth, you know, having having me around just to give opinion or to give insight or kind of um, mediate between um, ex-officials and ex-players. A hundred percent. Just, I mean, as you say, you haven't refed a game, but those guys aren't doctors. Um, so, no. you know, <laughs> you know, the, the, I could, it would only benefit the league to have you help out. And uh, you, you take matters in a, a very, um, for the health of the players, you really do care about the health of these men playing this game. I I really would like to see them open up and get you in there to help out. Um, I think it would only help the league out, and I, I really think you're doing a great work over there. And I, I look forward to hearing more from you and seeing and getting this book out. I want to read that thing. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm actually I'm going to um, Philly in a couple of weeks. Um, to a conference but I'm um, meeting up with a couple of um, ex-NHL players while I'm over there as well and getting some more insight and getting working on the book so it will be coming are you going to go to a game when you're in the States I am yeah I'm going to see um, Flyers versus Flames so I get to see Yaga for the first time which is quite exciting as well that's very exciting Uh, that's that's incredible and uh, Doctor, I, I thank you again for coming on Um, I'll probably have to stop asking to come on for a while till you get that book done so I can read it 
<laughs> oh, there's many things preventing me from writing it, but it is, it is coming slowly. Well, tell, tell everybody where they can find you. Great. I'm on um, Twitter and it's at Silverwood VS. Um, so you can find me on there. Um, always great to have a chat um, about hockey or hockey related things. And um, and go I check her out in Ice Guardians. You know where my book play- Sorry? I said, and make sure to go check you out in Ice Guardians. If you haven't seen it at this point, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but. <laughs> yeah, it's on Netflix yeah. um, internationally. And it's also now available on DVD in Canada. Um, until the Netflix release on that sometime and, later on. And how how huge is that that it's on Netflix? I mean, that's just insane. That's that's great. I'm I'm, I'm happy for what? Scorgy it's, and everybody. It's been crazy because there was a lot of attention from it initially um, with the theatrical showings, and then when it came download, there was another series. But I found out with Netflix, different people are watching it. Oh yeah. Who wouldn't have you know wouldn't have made the effort to buy it, buy it or go and watch it? Who got really interesting insights so i've had a lot of people contact me who are in involved in other sports see the parallels um or just interested in human behavior and oh. watched it because it was free and available so it's been brilliant and i'm, I'm sure they've had a, a great deal of uh of views and downloads on that oh i'm sure and it, like you said it, it'll pop up in people's queue if you had you know a history of watching documentaries or anything from that to you know you watch slap shot so i mean the yeah. the the Mass amounts of people that has probably reached through that medium is uh, is is amazing, and I'm I'm very happy for everybody involved in the film, um, and I'm yeah. very happy I could get you on, and I I learned a lot about the league, um, and I'm I'm sure everyone else did, so I appreciate you coming on, Doctor. Oh, you're welcome. I'm hoping that uh, good changes are made in the league, so I can come on and be a little bit more positive about it next time. <laughs> Let's keep our fingers crossed, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, go Giants! <laughs> you don't don't start fighting talk now it's far too early <laughs> <laughs> there i had to go ruin a nice conversation huh no. <laughs> <laughs> all right you have a good day thank you thank you very much all right bye doctor bye bye